So this what conference we, will now be recorded. What are we starting this today then? No, no, we, we, we are not yet started. So we were to talking about a few other topics that, uh, I mean, uh, so we can try to include as part of our class. So okay. he was uh, suggesting uh, the few basic examples of uh, OC job. So I was just uh, telling that how OC works. Uh, maybe mostly tomorrow I'll I'll show you that we will see how OC uh, we can submit a simple maybe a simple job. Uh, so in in actual scenario, the developers may be using a complicated uh, workflow and a lot of dependency he can define. So I will show you the basic example tomorrow. Uh, and also that template mostly we can download from internet and can use. And uh, you, Ish, can I just uh, and again, she can just can I just repeat no. very quickly, please? Sorry for that. No, no, no. We, we were just talking about the OC thing, like the, this. Uh, uh, Prasad was asking, like, can we have a simple demo on OC? So we will do that tomorrow. And uh, like I was telling, like, what is OC and how they use in real production environment. So maybe a lot of dependent job they need to do. So one job is successful, then only they will do the next one. So this job, they can. There are multiple ways to do the job. There are uh, like third-party application available to do that. Sometimes people make use of OC. So in OC, they define a series of XML. I mean, an XML file. So that contain the steps like how to do the job. Okay, like once this is done, then go to the next level like that. So I'll I'll show you some simple uh, basic example. And we can define a lot of actions like we call as hive actions, then uh, pig action, scope action. The action means some job. So, and if the job is successful, then go to this. If fail, then go to this. I like that we can define in that XML file. So, it's all about uh, learning how to modify that XML. So, we will get that standard template from internet, and uh, we can, I'll just show you the simple example how to submit and do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ashish Impala will uh, uh, will be working for uh, yeah, streaming of data, right? Streaming data. No, Impala basically it's uh, similar to Hive, so we can have the databases and tables, and also uh, can write queries. We can say it's using the same uh, data and metadata that Hive is using in backend, but only the difference is the way it processes. Okay, and it's an in it, it making use of in memory processing. So the, definitely so it will be much faster than uh, compared to the other Okay, okay uh, one more thing uh, can we uh, can we install uh, a Spark component in our cluster and can we run a any sample job? Yeah, that also we can so from uh, here we have option to add service the spark component also we can add that Okay, Maybe the missing uh, component. Every interview, okay. everyone is asking, but I don't know how mm -hmm. to run the Spark job, sample job also. Yeah, we will just see that sample job of OC, scope, and uh, a few more like uh, components, and we'll see. Okay, so now uh, we will uh, see. Uh, okay, so in I think the previous class we were discussing about how uh, yarn works. So now we will uh, do. Uh, a few more uh, configuration or fine tuning of yarn okay so yarn is the component which is taking care of map reduce part so whenever we submit the job so it will uh, run the job and uh, yarn has got the resource manager and node manager component and uh, resource manager will do the uh, actually it's a master component so it can have an active standby mode and a node manager will be running on the worker host. And uh, one second. So, like, uh, so we have a resource manager which is a master, and uh, we have a node manager which is running as a worker component. Okay. And uh, so these are on workers, and this is master. And we can have a multiple resource manager. Uh, to have I mean that that is something like uh, in in case of this resource manager goes down So we can have the second one to work 
Uh, so whenever the user submit the job, he submit that job and details to resource manager. Then a resource manager will uh, launch a container. So container, you may hear about the term terminology container. So which is nothing but uh, like just some CPU and memory and then JVM process is running. So application master. So application master. Every job, whenever uh, some people submit the job. So based on the scheduling policies and available resources first it will launch an application master so and also it choose the worker host based on the availability and this application master uh, will do the remaining part like uh, launching additional uh, containers for this job and uh, coordinating the containers and communicating with the resource manager so every job will have a single application master that will take care of the job so application master will be there and it will have the containers for map as well as the reduce job okay so we will have the map job running and reduce job running and we will uh, see that uh, tuning part now how we can uh, uh, increase the efficiency uh, of uh, this uh, resource manager how the resource manager will decide uh, decide uh, on which node the application master should launch like uh, uh, it's all submitting a job uh, it's all like, based, based on the scheduling policy and availability of resources availability of resources i mean which which component will take care of that availability of resources uh, see i think uh, this one uh, i have already uh, explain right maybe i think you missed that class uh, see it's all uh, we have a cpu and memory component okay so available on each host and whenever uh, this resource manager is a master and there will be heartbeat sync between the node manager and uh, resource manager and uh, so if any job is running again this will inform okay this is used and we cannot have multiple another container and also there will be a scheduler in backend so we will be seeing that scheduler in detail and that schedule based on that scheduling policy only it will choose the host where to launch or how many uh, where to launch the containers because if this job this is completely filled and uh, the job is running job means it can be mapper or reducer so it can be from other uh, users job so if that is already running and the resources of i mean these resources are occupied so the resources in this in the term like cpu and memory so it's using the portion of cpu and memory and launch a jvm process so that we call as container and in that container is used for running map or reduce job also the application master itself running as a container okay, okay. on which host to run which process in the node manager will inform the resource manager about the availability of resource? Who is responsible? Oh, that is what that is what the resource. The, if you check that uh, uh, this thing, uh, resource manager and node manager. Okay, these are the components. So the resource manager is a master component and node manager is the worker component. So the node manager will uh, communicate with the resource manager and uh, that communication will happen periodically and uh, the heart beating also will happen. Anyway, I will watch your uh, previous videos again. No yeah, problem. maybe yeah, that is okay. We will uh, see that detail later. So now just understand. Okay, so these are the component resource manager and node manager. So node manager is a worker component and also each host will be having uh, some portion of memory and cpu available for the job okay and this is all configurable part okay how much cpu and how much memory we can have it here for the job and this is what we do in the configuration so by default it will take some portion of cpu and memory and here also it will take so if that cpu and memory is used by some containers and then that is something like this uh, scheduling algorithm decide where to launch so sometimes if it's completely occupied then it will be in the waiting state so this is all the resource manager will do so resource manager is the master component and we have the node manager which is the daemon or process which is running on the worker and resource manager to the node manager there will be a communication or heartbeat syncing mechanism 
that will send this information okay so which host is resources are available which host resources are not available so this resources is a subset of total resources and we will okay from each host we will uh, did, uh, allocate some portion of cpu and memory for operating system some portion for other process and the remaining only we will be allocating to the job and whenever some someone submit the job it will be using that portion of cpu and memory and it will launch the container so container is nothing but a jvm process like if someone submit the job to resource manager it will check the availability so if the resources are available then it will launch a process jvm process in that vm so that is called a container and container is nothing like a jvm process with certain cpu and memory allocated and that is called application master so that again control that job and it will if it's needed it will launch additional containers and it will coordinate do the coordination of that container and do the negotiation with the resource manager and launch additional containers so this is what happened when we submit the job so so that i think uh, this one i already explained uh, when we uh, discuss about the yarn concept so yarn has resource manager and node manager so resource manager is running us in the master and node manager on the worker machine and there will be a periodic uh, syncing or communication between resource manager to node manager and again in the node manager we are just allocating portion of cpu and memory for only for running this yarn job not for any anything else so and it's using this portion whatever the dedicated cpu and memory uh, portion we allocated for running the job so for running the job it will launch a process that we normally call as container so that is nothing but a portion of cpu and memory as uh, taken and uh, uh, using that because if you are not controlling this memory and all so multiple containers may be launched here and definitely your system will hang so in order to avoid that so we have a res some restrictions okay only this much we can make use of so uh, this is all negotiation and all comes through application master application master will be available for every job so every job one application master so that will be running as a jvm process so that will negotiate with the resource manager and uh, the scheduling and QE mechanism will be available as part of resource manager and uh, based on that scheduling policies and all resource manager will allocate other host also if it's needed okay so if you look into a job okay so job will have a application master so which is nothing but a one jvm process and uh, which is responsible for managing that host and it will have a uh, multiple containers using for either mapper or a reducer job so we will uh, see that a uh, detail here so if you just go to the web ui so first you can have that uh, yarn and uh, you can have it uh, source manager web ui Okay, so this is the resource manager web i just use that uh, public ip detail here and here you can see the detail okay so app submitted app spending apps running apps completed so how many applications are already started completed containers running then how much memory used so till here so that is the usage summary and here you can see the available memory is total available is this one and uh, reserve this one v core used and v core so v core is nothing but the processor core only but it's a like logical uh, multiplied value of that actual cpu core okay so here if you see here 4.73 and 16 uh, core okay so we have uh, if you look here Okay, 4.6 gig and 6 core so normally uh, the container size so i think by default it will be 1 gig and 1 core 1 v core okay like that so here we can have the containers of maximum 6 containers right so because if it's using 1 gig ram and 1 core we have only 6 uh, not uh, not the 6 because we can have only 
four only four, one two three four because it's limited to 4.6 gig so we will see a sample map reduce job and see how uh, how many uh, mapper or reducer job we can run at a time okay so this is the total memory available and this is the total v core v core used and v core total okay six are available and 4.6 and uh, we will just switch to one of the user okay so hdfs dfs hyphen ls and slash okay so uh okay let me come back to the root user find slash i don't remember so i don't remember where this example hadoop example jar file is located so you can use this uh, Hadoop MapReduce example or Hadoop example jar file for running simple MapReduce job. So you can choose uh, from, I think uh, most of them are symbolic linked to other. So you can choose this one. Okay, so this is the like sample job which is available in uh, our cloud or our distribution. So if you don't remember the exact path, you can just use this search pattern. Find slash iPhone name star hadoop star example star dot job okay so you can find so from under slash directory i'm just searching for this one so I, I just noted down this one and uh, let me have a notepad so So to run a job, Hadoop jar, so that this one, pi, or or if you don't have, so this jar file is written by or distributed by Apache distribution. So if you don't know anything, just use enter and it will show that list of options that we can make use of. So I always prefer to use this pi, random uh, sorting text writer a lot of options are there the so pi is something like which we can use for calculating the value of pi and it's using some algorithm in backend so number of uh, um, mappers and sample per mapper you can just choose some values here okay can so job can just start know, can we know the process id i mean uh... Uh, what are the process IDs are currently running for each process ID for a particular job? Like, can we get the information from OS level? For example, uh, 10, 10 map reduce jobs are running. Mm. In the other window, can we get the process IDs, PP IDs? I mean, uh, there is one scenario like uh, multiple. Uh, yeah. yeah, that you can use the standard Linux command and you can find out. But also, this, application ID, this application ID will show in the PS command. Up this one, it will not show as this ID. So it will yeah, show some uh, JVM ID. This particular, this particular application ID is mapped to one particular PID. Like uh, PIDs will come with a user ID or application ID in the Linux level. Linux level definitely it will uh, have uh, you have to do that PSCF command and uh, find out but this ID is specific to this one and also uh, it will be using some Java uh, command to run that so here you can see if you go to this one at OS level you have to find out on which host it's running and you have you can just use PSCF command and uh, find out this uh, JVM running JVM detail okay here you can see uh, it's showing us running and only three containers okay even though I request I requested here for uh, 50 okay but at a time it can run only three the reason is uh, one is allocated for application master and the remaining three containers only available so here we have uh, three so definitely so one will be used by 
application master and uh, the remaining are used for running mapper or reducer task and if we need um, the detail so we can just hit here okay and it, it's uh, running on worker 3 we can see here okay and uh, i think one uh, second this is completed that is the reason like if i just use uh hundred Okay, the job is started this is the second job and the first job you can see it's finished and it's running still three containers only it can uh, run right and you can just hit this link and to get the few few more details so since this is pointing to private ip so i'll have to copy this public ip address and uh, and total if, if you can just hit this job detail again and see uh, how many mappers are needed total total 100 and 78 are pending and two are running right and only one reduced job and that is still in pending so even though uh, it's a we we are expecting as a as parallel run okay so we need a hundred slots or hundred container but we have only it's only limited to three so what it will do it will run three at a time then remaining 97 will be in pending state okay and uh, once the three is completed it will uh, just uh, keep it aside and the remaining three will run like that so we have a three completed here and again if this three is completed so we will have six completed and 91 will be in the pending state so this is how the job will work in backend so even though we are expecting our job is running in parallel so it's not actually running in parallel it's running as part by part but to run is in a fully parallel mode we need 100 containers or 100 containers to launch but we don't have that much uh, resources available here only the three it can run at a time so now uh, again if you just keep refresh you can see only two jobs are running and 36 is in a pen is still in pending state so 62 are completed and also the completed job like so you can have this uh, hit here and see the completed job so what is the task id okay and uh, when it started and those information and also the running job you can just hit and see i think uh, i'll have to refresh this again so i'll have to just hit on the running one and uh, this is uh, on on which host this is running and uh, uh, what, what is the status and all okay so it's running on the worker one so we will just log into the worker one and see what are the process running on that host. Sijish, what are the stages in the map reduce job? When you submit the job, what are the stages which it will go? Like uh, in what stage, uh, what is the process is running in the back side, the behind? So Submit's that is what stage, running stage, something like some stages are there, right? No, no, you are talking about the accepted state. Uh, yeah, the running. how many states are there? No, no, that, that is something like it's showing in, in this window. Okay, it's a, uh, ex, first it will accept the job and if it's the container launch, it will be in the running and completed and uh, that, that is a different state it shows. The accepted state means, I mean, uh, only uh, th this is going to collect all the resources or... Uh... 
No, no, I accept it. I'll, 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 I'll show that maybe at the end of this, uh, you will get a, cl a clarity. I'll show that. So when we st start submitting multiple jobs, so that will be on the different state. You can see from this, if you just open that resource manager window, you can see that. I'll show you that. Give me some time. So normally the accepted state means that uh, the no resources are available. So if the resources are available, it will show uh, change it to the uh, running state. Okay, let me come here. So, okay, not this IP. Sorry, I, I should use uh, this master IP. So, where my resource manager is running, and eight zero double eight is a port. Oops, that is also completed. That is the reason we were not able to see. Uh, so let me run it again. So you can just uh, refresh here and see that job is running. So initially, only one container has launched. And also, you can just go to the application master. and uh, see uh, how many are completed how many are running and uh, we just hit on that job and uh, running job Oops. okay now we have uh, two tasks are running so this is running on worker three and uh, this is completed state. It's on worker two. Okay, so I think every time it's keep changing. Here you can see this uh, uh, JVM process, okay? And uh, I don't know this application ID. It's uh, showing us uh, in the argument. Uh, so this is actual uh, process, the Unix process which is running on this host. Okay. And uh, the container, it's I, I mean to say it's it's just a, a container or JVM process, and uh, on that this particular task or either map or reduce task is running. Uh, so you can uh, use uh, this command and uh, if you if, here I just use uh, this option to search but in case uh, you may not be able to do that search with uh, ID so in that case you can just uh, hit with application ID okay so it's zero double eight so if any job is running just search with application ID somewhere in the folder structure it may if it match then uh, it shows that Okay, I think now nothing is running here. So earlier it was showing, right? 
so now yeah now it's running some job so it will uh, uh, finish whenever the job is completed okay or that particular task is completed so if you keep running this so now it's not there right yeah and immediately it has come so that is something like a jvm process and also if you just see here so you can see uh, it's a, a java based application it's running and uh, uh, even though some shell script along and it's a java argument and some other parameter is making use of and it's running that and basically uh, the container is nothing but uh, the portion of cpu and portion of uh, memory is allocated and it's making use of that and running as a java process and uh, how many it can use is limited with this configuration and it's all based on the configured value but in our actual case so if you look into the configuration and uh, we have got how much memory and how much cpu so if you just see here top command and just press one okay so it's a two core uh, cpu so total <coughs> we have uh, uh, two into three 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 workers we have and two core so totally we have physical six cores available and to the memory slash proc mem info i think kvmb uh, is it's around 8 gig actually <clears throat> okay so this is our uh, worker okay see when we design a cluster definitely uh, we need to allocate some portion of uh, memory and cpu for operating system then uh, cloudera manager or cdh or any other third party proce uh, process okay so <clears throat> we have to uh, allocate certain portion for operating system and all the remaining portion like <clears throat> here my configuration is not ideal and also i have only eight core and eight eight gig ram and uh, this much core uh, cpu core machine so even i cannot completely allocate this six core and 24 gig ram to my uh, containers because I have something uh, other than that operating system is running Cloudera manager process is running CDH is running and uh, the other application maybe some other uh, third-party application running so we need to allocate the CPU and memory for that also and the remaining only you can make use of for your job so even though it's a uh, 6 and 24 but in our case it's a uh, showing as uh, this container uh, if you just look here only uh, 4.7 and uh, 4.7 gig and uh, uh, 6 core right but it can never used more than uh, 6 because the if it's 6 and 6 6 v core and uh, 6 gig ram okay 1 gig 1 1 that is fine so we can have uh, six containers running but here if it's six and 4.7 it, it's limited to four containers only the reason is uh, how the containers uh, how we allocate this memory and cpu and how the container each container is allocated that that will control uh, this fact this configuration okay so in my case and again it's not actual core of cpu they are using so this cpu we will multiply with some number and that is the reason we are saying it's a v core but memory we will use the actual value as it is okay so even if it's six core we are completely and in in our case testing case we can completely allocate the reason is we are not uh, using any heavy uh, jobs here so it's fine but uh, actual case so we need to consider this operating system and other uh, parameters so for tuning this parameter okay so like uh, the initial default is not 
proper even if you uh, install and configure very big cluster so this may not be in the proper way so uh, you have to tune yarn so what you can do is just search cloudera yarn tuning okay so just to hit that see here if you just see here and uh, this is the best documentation you can uh, refer and uh, actually on each host we'll have a memory and we core how effectively we can utilize this memory for building container and uh, there is a documentation from uh, cloudera or one one spreadsheet that we can make use of for configuring the parameter just use this link this is the yarn tuning spreadsheet and uh, download that okay so it's a downloader just open that and uh, you have to uh, uh, say so yeah, nothing you need to you need not to apply any logic here so whatever the your available value you have to populate then finally you will get the configuration based on that you have to change your configuration and uh, here okay so you can have uh, your total uh, memory and uh, total cpu and all those information you can add it here and uh, i think uh, yeah so how much uh, you have uh, ram so ram on each ma machine i have 8 gig okay and cpu i have 4 but if i use uh, this and again the number is 3 if i use this one i will have only very uh, few v cores available or few memory available the reason is it will do allocation very good allocation for the cloud. you can see here so this is the value which i filled so mainly you have shown yeah. 4.76 gb that is per, per node or uh, uh, the cluster available memory you have shown right just now on the gui uh, 4.73 is per, per node <laughs> No, no, it's not the per node configuration. It's a complete how much total your cluster capacity all together. But uh, each node you are showing 8 GB memory, right? I mean, uh, why it is so showing that, that? That is the reason I, I told, right? So we have to uh, manually uh, fine tune this but because this is the something it's taking by default. Okay, okay, so, okay. okay default populated value it's using, and uh, because. Uh, it may not be proper in all the cases and we have to manually tune this and also here sometime we may need to apply some logic and on each host in our case we have a, a three into eight and two into so this is six is fine but entire six core is populated here but uh, the memory is not properly updated so the reason is like the cloudera is using its own logic to populate this value so maybe it's having some uh, algorithm to do that but so in order to do it in a proper way so we need to manually uh, fine tune so <clears throat> in our case so we have <clears throat> 8 gig and 4 core and uh, uh, cpu is 1 and uh, i think uh, 1 into uh, 2 right Uh, so size quantity I think uh, so to the number of uh, CPUs and the number of hardware cores per CPU okay uh, so the calculation of V cores
hyper threading so we can have it yes or no uh, okay so the physically we we will have that uh, multi core uh, cpu but again this is all completely hardware so suppose if this is your uh, cpu so we will have the uh, one itself has the multi core like maybe it have a uh, multiple cores available so even quad core and exa core and different core configuration is available so in our case we can have only uh, total uh, two cores available you can just use the top command and press one so you can see cpu zero and cpu one or else you can just use cat sash proc cpu info so this will give how many processor you have okay you can just note down this command sash proc cpu info and uh, so this spreadsheet is saying okay so if you have a hyper threading only one one okay i have only uh, uh one and uh, maybe two it's a two core processor so one physical quantity and a, a number of cores available so in that case i have i'm getting only the two and eight gig ram and hard disk and how ethernet the, you can which process is consuming more memory like a cpio command or a top command top top command you can use but if it's okay. consuming more or consuming less that doesn't matter here so we are just concerned about the number here okay so that is something like it when when we run the job that load and all we will check but here so we are just de designing that based on our uh, actual values with the data node so this is only for the data node so the memory and processing capacity whatever the things we are defining only for the worker host okay and uh, so what is the total and this one and here so here we have uh, some options like so what is the overhead so at how many core and how many uh, memory we need to allocate for operating system this much we need cloudera manager agent this much we need so for and finally if you just see that available for container we have a negative so that means we are actually lack of resources so this is the standard way of configuration they are just allocating one cpu core and 8 gig ram for operating system and this is for cloudera manager agent this is for worker component whatever the components running okay so but i'm just using uh, some uh, exaggerated value like i can just use a 16 or something even if i use the 16 okay so i have a 5 uh, gig or uh, like if i just use the 32 okay so 21 is available so actually we should not do that we should do the actual values so this is the total uh, okay i don't need to use here 16 i can just use if i use 16 5 and uh, 24 okay so i have 13 gig and four core available okay so don't do this uh, kind of uh, calculation because act whatever the actual value you have here you have to choose uh, because in my case i don't have much resources available so because if i launch uh, and also for uh, i'm not running going to run any heavy uh, application so i'm just saying okay i have 24 gig ram per machine and four into two eight uh cpus per node actually this is not the actual value you should put actual value and from that value it's uh, doing a lot of detection like how much is needed for operating system and all so i can just uh, remove uh yeah node manager as a cloud manager agent and uh, i'm just using uh okay so what is this value this is uh, I, I, it's just, yeah. Shigish. So, yeah. so, so we should count the memory and the resource for all the nodes suppose the uh, uh, cluster has around thousand nodes so we should count total or what should we do here no that that is something like uh, next we have to define that size okay so how much we need okay so 
yeah number of you know, workers we can if you have a thousand you can just use that thousand here okay so this is the per node configuration whatever the value only these two things you are adding here is one of one host normally if you in a standard configuration we do with identical configuration all the workers have the same configuration like same memory and uh, even though heterogeneous is supported but that is not an ideal one so we need we can have that so this is one one host how much memory and how much cpu we have so this value you can just take note so that is not a, a relevant one but these two are you need to do okay so i'm just assuming i have a 24 on one host and four into two eight on that host from that it do a lot of detection so it's on operating system overhead and the cloud RAM manager agent and if you have some other application running so you need to allocate the memory and cpu for that and the remaining portion is only will be available for containers hmm. and also okay so this is available for container and this much memory is available for container and again uh, we have another option like we course to week or multiplier so whatever the values we are assigning to a container is not actual a uh, single core we cannot have a single core as like like i said like one gig and one core right so we are just using a logical portion or one fourth or one third so for example so physical to weak or multiplier if i use a one means so actual one core of cpu will be allocated to this container okay no other containers will be running if i use the four means only 25 percentage of uh, a core will be allocated for a container say for example if one container one cpu core is free then it can run four containers at a, at a time so it's uh, in a, doing in a sharing mode so i just use a four normally you we will use as a two only the standard practice i'm just using four because i need more values here 16 and uh, or or i can just use a three so i'll have the 12 and 12 gig uh, ram so i can have the 12 containers running parallelly so i well, just focus on while it, sharing, uh, while it is sharing what about the existing uh, data in the memory it will be uploaded existing data it will not store in memory so it's not hard disk okay yeah, so it's... i know that but ram is there right? ram maintains some information right i mean when the pro CPU is uh, that container is used for other uh, other process, I mean uh, it's sharing for uh, four processes. Uh, you, have, you, you mean that is that thing, right? You are saying? No, no. It, it's something like okay, you have a one core uh, data node. One core means you are allocating uh, logically. You are allocating the remaining cores to other application and all. And in one of the data node, you have one core. So from and you have a three gig RAM, right? So if you just use that logical in multiplier as three, that means you will you can have the three V cores available. You got what this point, right? So it's not like a, a physical sharing. So don't confuse that. It's like okay. See, uh, I'll, I'll show you that here. Uh, so for example, this is one machine, right? And you have so you have some uh, CPU and memory available, and you just given some portion of CPU and memory for other process, and you have one uh, core available, and uh, you have a uh, uh, four gig RAM available, and uh, you are just doing a multiplier into four means, so that means you have four V cores and four gig RAM, so that means you will be able to launch four containers with one gig one core combination one gig one v core combination so that doesn't mean uh, so this physically this is sharing this cpu or something so actually in backend an application running there will be a switch will happen between the application so not in a sharing or nothing like that okay, okay. got it but why so, you are showing but, three day, or what, what reason uh, in that Excel sheet you are showing three, multiplier three, because no, no, we left this three is four, three GB RAM? No, no, no. That is something like I need to match it with this one. Okay, I'm just using one V core with one uh, gig RAM. 
So the reason is I don't have uh, much resources available. I'm just uh, exaggerating these values. So that's it just for demonstration purpose. Otherwise, mostly people do means two. Two means <laughs> one, <laughs> physical, one physical uh, no. port, we, we can have uh, two uh, jobs or two containers. So here I just use the three means I just need the 12. Okay, I have the 12 and 12 values. So that means I can make use of this combination. So normally people can use you, can two. You show me, can you show me in our Excel sheet uh, on what condition this particular value will be changed? For example, if we have a three, three GB of memory left, I mean three GB of memory is available, then we will use uh, three uh, three in this value, right? I mean, your, your, your intention is like that, right? Uh, see, uh, okay, the one first thing is if you you have to fill your total value from that you have out of deduction so deduction is based on other uh, process because you cannot completely use the resources the so resources i mean to say memory and uh, cpu so okay. some portion of memory and cpu i am reserving for other application because i can uh, this application also has to run because if i take entire resources for my uh, containers for yarn then this application will hang and whatever the portion left okay only i can use for my uh, yarn job and again the yarn has an option called v core that means existing physical core it's virtually multiplied into n numbers so but but for memory we don't have that option but actually the how this is, even though it's showing us 12 v core it's something like one fourth or one third of that actual uh, value so it's nothing like uh, so the only uh, the intention is to control the number of concurrent running containers you got this point right see if i just use uh, one here so that means the four and uh, maybe i even though i have 12 gig ram so uh, i can just increase the memory but it's limited to use the four containers but i need oh. to have the multiple containers run uh, at the time that is the reason i use this increase this value oh, I got it now. okay the so available, if I just, containers, available yeah. containers are four that's the reason we are we are asking them to uh, 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 i mean uh, okay i got it uh, that's why you are increasing the parameter correct see uh, here i i have left so th until this i think th everyone is clear and uh, here until here so that means out of our total value that we have got some deduction and balance is this one and we can uh, con i mean control how many containers can run on this host how many containers mean how many mapper and reducer job at a time so if, if you can technically you can increase it but the reason is if you increase a lot there will be a, a problem performance issue and because all the resources are uh, overutilized and uh, there will be a lot of issue and uh, four core and uh, 12 gig available so one option is we can have only four containers running here right uh, so that is also one option otherwise uh, we can have say for example we can have the logical multiplayer so two so that means eight eight and uh, 12 or uh, if i just use the three means 12 per node okay i can have the 12 con uh, containers running and how oh, many sorry, numbers i have is three so uh, only the first page you need to fill the value but uh, i'm uh, repeating so don't uh, if you are using in a production kind of deployment or anything so use the actual value here and uh, based on that whatever the thing you are getting maybe you need to add some value say for example impala is running you need to add that and add that memory portion and hbase region is running add that and any other third party application is running add that also and because you have to reduce that memory also and whatever the final value you are getting you can make use of your container and we have an option to multiply the actual core to v core so that this is something like we are just saying our con our a yarn configuration like we have 12 core and 12 gig uh, ram available and the number of this is the number of hosts available and once this is done we will get a lot of uh, uh, options like okay uh, what are the parameters you need to change and also what is the status and the map reduce configuration so these two parameters okay the next two tab contain certain values so that will control so that we can copy and edit.
so this is something uh the yarn node manager uh, v core so total v uh, v core available so if you see here so we have a 12 right so in a single machine we are having 12 v core and in a single machine we have a 13 or the, i think it's a 12 gig uh, 1024 into 12 i think you will have this value right so this is the page you need to add your input and this is the page you have to copy and update in your yarn configuration the first is the v core number so in this case i think uh, total v core uh, might be uh, 1.5 or something i don't know so we will uh, go to the cloudera manager go to the yarn configuration use this value it's a two so that is the reason we are getting three into two total six right but if i just use uh, instead of two if i use this uh, sorry this value as 12 so 12 into uh, 3 36 we will uh, later once we do this so we, we can have 36 v cores available after some time okay so this is the value yarn uh, node manager resource cpu v core will decide how many v cores per a worker host okay and save that and uh, next parameter is memory memory per host uh, that is done and uh, this much mb uh, one default group okay uh, so this is thou thirteen three one two thirteen three uh, not manage the default i don't know why we have the default okay both we change to this value and uh, so verify that is fine and uh, okay so for the containers uh, like you said right so we you were talking like initially how we can say okay how much uh, we core we can allocate per container so what is the minimum uh, container allocation what is the maximum allocation and what is the increment so this value we can change by using this parameter okay so minimum allocation v core so that means when you launch a container so it will be with minimum one v core and the maximum means uh, till uh, what extent or till at what limit we can increase so <clears throat> like uh, see here so by default it will launch with one gig and one v core but we can increase this value like this v core we can have it till till 44 here it's saying we can have right so but this memory also this is the same container we can increase that memory parameter but this our configuration parameter that we that will uh, let this container to expand okay so we'll change that also and uh, this is the minimum is one that is fine earlier also and the maximum may be earlier uh, six but this time we have increased so the maximum allocation is 44 that means we can have a single container with a maximum 44 v core and uh, <clears throat> increment allocation uh, how we can increase that is also fine and uh, similarly for memory also what is the minimum so minimum is one gig and uh, what is the maximum i think uh, Two five zero double eight or twenty five gig or some value. The maximum is one point seven, so we can have two fifty eight eighty. Two fifty eight eighty. And uh, what is the increment? So this is the increment is uh, five twelve and uh, that's it 
and the next is uh, some uh, map reduce configuration we need to change okay so uh, uh, shigish how to calculate this heap and other things sizing uh, sizing and other stuff and is it the same thing apply for uh, these are the for the mapper map reduce job but what about the high vantage job and other scoop uh, Hive has its own, uh, con but in backend, uh, the map reduce, uh, it's making use of this one. Okay. So if any map reduce or yarn is job is running, so that uh, this applies for that also. Uh, but in Hive level, it has its own configuration for tuning. Okay. This is a uh, one and uh, because in Hive also backend it's running as a map reduce job. MB it's a one gig, that is fine. Uh, application master command options, I think. Uh, iPhone XMX uh, 800, I don't know. iPhone XMX. Uh, 800 so and uh, this one point eight that is fine so map produce map CPU v core one that is fine. Okay, one gig. Okay, so I've uh, made the changes as per that uh, rec recommendation. So we can just uh, go back once we have saved and you can see some stale configuration is detected here and there just hit that and uh, you may need to redeploy because a lot of uh, parameters has changed just uh, restart and uh, redeploy and the restart so basically this is a standard template and uh, you need to add your values so and remember so this is you need to add the values for one of one host and assuming you have an identical configuration and uh, uh, if you have a uh, um, i mean the multi uh, you have uh, your total memory and total cpu all those information you can have and what is the total number you can add it here and also if you have any other application running you can have it so this is all the detection and finally you will have this much for your running your job alone okay and from that uh, whatever the remaining cpu you can have uh, add a logical multiplier and you will have uh, some v core so that v core we can add for running the job and uh, it will be using some portion of that v core and the portion of memory so initially one gig and uh, one one core for the container so that you can have it the configuration detail here so what is the allocated for the container minimum and uh, minimum memory and uh, minimum v core so it's initially one and one but it can increase up to 44 v core and uh, this is a uh, 25 gig so i mean 24 gig till 24 gig it can uh, i mean one container can expand and uh, map reduce also you need to add some configuration so we'll have to wait until uh, this is done and also uh, this uh, not the yarn configuration the map reduce uh, configuration parameter they can pass while running the job itself you will see uh, some of the parameters like the Q name, etc. In when we do that test, you know. So we'll just wait until this deployment is over. Finish. Okay. So now, so earlier this is uh, 4.7 gig and uh, 6 v core. Now, if you just expand that, 
you can uh, see total 36 and 39 gig available okay so that that is a value and i think uh, yeah 36 and 39 mm, but this is just a uh, value which i populated here based on my input but actually it will be much lower than this value because i just use this 24 gig i don't have actually 24 gig only 8 uh, gig available but still i can run the job and see whether this is working or failing and uh, i just use 100 mapper job and uh, i don't know whether this will uh, hang my system okay so job is just uh, starting i think uh, I think uh, I need to uh, decrease this. Uh, maybe I'll just say it's 12 gig. And uh, Okay, so I just added uh, this as 12 gig, and uh, so that means uh, 4 and uh, 2 gig. So multiplier two. Uh, so okay, I'm just uh, uh, taking uh, this value. So two two uh, gig and two core per machine, and uh, uh, I I'm just going to change these values again because um, that 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 values are not working properly. I'll have to go to the yarn configuration and. Uh, change this and from 12 to 2 I am changing and uh, memory so this is the total memory per uh, system or per, per host from 13 to 2 gig saving that and uh, what else we need yeah so this value I need So that is one and uh, I don't know maximum uh, v core allocation Maximum reserve uh, or reservation for a container. Okay, I'll just uh, reduce uh, this value also. This is one and uh, maximum I can have it. I'm just changing to two. And uh, increment. Maybe one, that is fine. And uh, This value is one gig, and the maximum allocation 
memory i'm just changing to 2 gig because if more memory it use 2 gig and uh, increment change it to 512 and uh, this map reduce a configuration also let me change this so this is one application master so one gig xmx option this why you are changing now again i mean uh, what are the issues you are you found what is the reason to change this no no the jobs are failing you have not seen oh, right? oh. Ah, okay. okay okay so when we we tried submit after that so we submitted the job and uh, that oh. is failing And uh, I just changed that value to lower error or somewhere near to the actual value. And uh, map memory 1024, 1 Jeep. Okay, so I think uh, most of them are done. Then restart. these type of changes we need a production outages uh yes we need to restart the yarn because the this this thing we do uh, very beginning uh, when we do the cluster okay. Okay, okay so once we deployed and all we won't make uh, this kind of changes so normally uh, uh we do at very very beginning so definitely it need an outage because anything any any uh, configuration changes which require a restart so require an outage so this kind of configuration will do only at the beginning when we deploy the cluster so after that we won't make uh, until and unless any performance issue or any suggestions uh, from the cloud are to do so that in that case only we do that because uh, so we uh, we normally uh, there will be a bundle uh, support bundle and uh, also the cloudera uh, if you have the support license uh, there will they will uh, receive that configuration and other important parameters in your cluster and based on that they will recommend some changes and they will say okay so this is not proper or this is something uh, incorrect so you need to change that so this kind of recommendation will comes from cloudera if you purchase that license so normally most of the enterprise they will have the license and uh, this cloudera will support and uh, in that case also you may need to do but that require an outage and uh, mostly you need a outage window to do that changes So this is done. Now let me
file does not exist. I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to run the same job. Can, can you wait a second? Just want to see, want to read what exactly it's uh, complaining about. Uh, uh, this is saying uh, the file not file doesn't exist. Okay, on this directory. Oh, okay. So the write operation is failing. Why is why is looking at reducer already? Uh, yeah, we just reduced to uh, six six oh. gig and uh, sorry. Yeah, it's trying to write to the reduce um, reducer file, right? We haven't started it hasn't started any job or anything like that yet mm. i think there's some other thing container exit with uh, so but even it's a uh, uh, failing uh, even before launching the container so yeah. we will just see something Application master is optional. It lets me reduce. Mm -hmm. 
first one. Uh, okay. So here you got this error, right? You could not create Java virtual machine. And uh, yeah, uh, because that is a, the reason is uh, uh, we use uh, this option. Command line option XMX. So this is saying like that option is not supported. Okay. Uh, well, I'll show you that again. So this is a page and uh, eight zero double eight. Okay. And uh, uh, this is the fail job. Even before launching that accepted state, so it's directly going to the fail state. So that me seems the application master itself failing to launch. So we can go to the history. Uh, and uh, this is the master one and get that master one IP address use okay and uh, here the application master attempt you can see so it try to run on mass worker one and then on worker two so you can go to any log and uh, this is pointing to worker two then get the worker two uh, IP address so the reason is like in our case we have the public and private host name issue that is the reason it's otherwise if in a a real environment you don't feel uh, this issue okay so here again i'm changing to ip address so here you can see invalid option and it's failing to launch that is the reason maybe i think if we can do with increased configuration also that will work so now i just finish that and uh, if i run the job it should and uh, if I just use it zero double eight, so I can see a total uh, six gig and six v core. But now you can see this is in running state, right? So the reason is uh, like we just did an invalid configuration for this value. So even if I just change uh, this value um, to twenty four or something. And uh, that will also will work. So how much did you say uh, said CG and which parameter was it? No, no. no. Uh, see, the the problem is we just set uh, this parameter, right? Uh, I'll I'll show you that here. So this is I add recommending to use iPhone XMX and I use 800. And uh, uh, so this is saying like an invalid option. And uh, I just removed this option from the this parameter. So if you just see this parameter in Cloudera Manager, uh, go to the yarn, and to conf it's not because of the increased number. So initially I thought it's because of increased number. So here I just added that iPhone XMX equal to some 800 something. I think it's for invalid, uh, um, invalid thing anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I need to use iPhone XMS equal to. I just use this way, like iPhone XMX. And then 800 something. So I, I I don't remember exactly. So I think I need to use some equal to something. So that because of this reason, application master is failing. Can you, that can is you reason. Uh, show all description there? And it will it give you any Sorry. help? Oh, all right, that's fine. It's, it's gone already. No, no. There was a help available in next right 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 to that parameter. I thought that will yeah. show them value. This one, right? This will show you what what is the. I mean, so this is the JVM option. Uh, what I believe is like. A, so with that, I need to use equal to. So this is the parameter, and uh, this uh, here you can see. So D uh, something it's used equal to. Maybe I need to use equal equal to 800. I don't. I'm not sure maybe we can try this option after putting equal to and again if it's failing then we need to exclude this because uh, without equal to it saying uh, you got what I did right so what I did is I just use this one and space so I think I need to use equal to 
So let's see if equal to works here. Okay, and uh, let's see whether this is working or not. This is also failing, then we need to remove that option. And, uh, yes, see the same same thing. Uh, this is happening. So what we need, so we just need to uh, remove that option. So go to the configuration. So this option, uh, Sorry. So this one, I need to change it back. So this I don't want. Then save. Also, it's not. I th initially I thought it's because of increased number, so it's not uh, that. So I can just uh, change this also. Uh, uh, we call data resources. Okay, I am just uh, making it as 12 core and uh, 12 gig CPU. So this parameter also I can just uh, add it or increase this value. So V core I can just make it to 12. Uh, two to 12 I can do, and uh, this one I can just use 12 gig. One gig to 12 gig. And uh, I think uh, this is all me not to change. It's there. And uh, uh, my produce thing also, uh, we are not, we cannot, we cannot see any changes except that. And uh, so once that is done, I can redeploy. And uh, so, so far we have a six core and six gig uh, RAM. So now after restarting, it will change it to. 12, 12 into 336 or something.
okay that is done now if you see here you can see 36 and 36 now if i run the job you will see now this is running or if it's again okay so this is an accepted state so that application master is launched so accepted state means so the application master has launched and it's negotiating for the resources so maybe some people will ask okay if you submit a job and it's saying in a state is inaccepted and for a long time what could be the reason it's nothing like the resources may not be available and it's waiting for the resources so that is the reason it's showing in accepted state so accepted state will change to the running state if resources are available and it run then finally it will reach to the uh, finished state and also it, if it's something like if you kill in between so you can see what are the different stages so it will be in killed or if any any reason it fits failed it will be in the failed state so these are the different and the mostly the people will ask in interview like if you just submit the job and it's showing in accepted state or if you're supporting you will say it's in accepted state the reason might be the resources not available at that time so and, uh, this Sri, is run. Sri, how yeah. to check the resources available just on the that front one the, that that particular row only we can check memory used and that is the only thing or something else also uh here uh, one option is here we can check okay so how many uh, just a hit uh, click here and uh -huh. go to the application master okay so one one is like here itself it's uh, clearly yes. saying like how many are running so how many containers are running so what is in use and what is available so the next option here it will show you the this job specific so how many mapper that that is here it's just saying how many are allocated how many are running but here it will give you the information like so how much in it need a more and what is the total uh, requirement for this job so all those information you can get sorry i think the job has finished yeah how many mapper is needed how many mapper are completed how many reducers how many are failed and all and uh, from the cloud manager also so you have an option like application so here uh, it will uh, give an information so what is the total usage per that application so whether it's a running or uh, so what is the type of application and all those things okay and uh, here we just submitted one uh, job okay. uh, we'll just take a five minutes break and then uh, we will uh, see the schedulers so how these work and what are the schedulers available okay so we'll take five minutes break
ஹலோ ஒர்க்கர்ஸ் so node managers will be running on the worker or data host and a resource manager will be running on any one of the uh, master and resource manager will have that high availability and uh, uh, we have schedulers which is associated with the resource manager so in yarn uh, with we will have uh, three types of schedulers one is fifo and the second is capacity scheduler and the third is fair share scheduler so these are the three different schedulers options available and uh, uh, these three schedulers we have in a different way and uh, also the default scheduling uh, scheduler that used in different distribution may be different so in apache one so this is the default one so fifa and capacity is in hortonworks it's the default scheduler and the fair share in cloudera so in cloudera we have the fair share scheduler by default but we have option to change <coughs> between the other schedulers and it's very easy <coughs> just changing that uh, a scheduler class option will do that so to change the scheduler so you can go to the yarn configuration and uh, search with the scheduler okay just search scheduler you can see that uh, this option yarn uh, resource manager scheduler class you can have this three so this is for fifo fair scheduler this is for fifo scheduler this is for capacity scheduler so if you want to change your schedulers to other you can just select that and save and restart the yarn configuration that will do so what i mean to say is like if you have any any distribution like if you are using hortonworks cloudera or uh, apache so you have option to change the scheduler only thing is you need to set this parameter yarn resource manager scheduler class to uh the different class name so you can have it for fair scheduler fifo scheduler okay. so that is also uh, we can do easily find hyphen name i don't remember like resource manager star dot jar uh yeah so this is the jar file okay so this is the jar file that yarn uh, server resource manager i think uh, this is also the same or yeah 5. cdh 4.7 and 5.8 okay any any jar file we will choose so the jar file is nothing but like you said it's a uh, java rk file so it will have lot of classes uh, compiled and bundled together and there will be different directory structure inside that jar file so if you want to list the class files and the, the structure in inside a jar file you can use jar command so in our case slash user java jdk then bin jar hyphen tvf you can use and just use this one so this is listing all the jar uh, i mean all the class and other details inside that so what you can do is grep hyphen i fifo just uh, dot uh, class why i use this i is i don't know which case they are used f in upper and f in lower that is the reason i use this so you can see org apache hadoop and this is the directory structure inside the jar file just take this one and uh, open a notepad or somewhere else you can just uh, put it and 
see you see it here just uh, or dot then this one yarn dot source manager dot scheduler dot fifa dot <coughs> this one just use this one so this is the value that they are using here in the cloudera manager for fifa scheduler similarly uh, we have a fair square scheduler you can just use that searching uh, just use fair dot class it will be with the uh, uh, okay so this is fifa one then yeah so the fair scheduler dot class and this is also similarly slash we just replace it with the dot uh, but that is needed only for hortonworks here or apache if you want to change you need to use this class name uh, like this but in cloudera we have vc option like so we can change it so we can change it to various schedulers okay i'm just uh, the default is a uh, fair scheduler in cloudera so no need to most of the cases you need not to change that because the people do with that fair scheduler by default but you can have it uh, option to change it to fifo or capacity and I, i'm changing changing to fifo and saving it and then maybe i need to uh, redeploy or restart the configuration so once i have done that so this is affected okay so while uh, this is getting started i will give you a brief like what is fifo so fifo is like its name says first in first out that means those who comes first he has the highest priority uh, like the the first he has to go then only he will get an opportunity so if anything uh, after his job so if anything is available then only his job will get start so technically uh, whatever the, the job submitted his uh, the people who submitted before him has to complete or has to uh, uh, say for example uh, after his usage if some resources available then only that will be available to this one so or this is completed then he will get the complete resources then only the people uh, uh, behind him will get that so it's like FIFO, the first in, first out, normal uh, queue. Okay, so there is no priority, nothing. Okay, the, it's like uh, uh, people who are traveling, I mean, in a queue. So first one will get that. And if first one is having that resources free, then only the next people will get. So now, right now, what I did is just uh, change this scheduling to FIFO. And we will see that how it works. Uh, okay in capacity scheduler what we do so total we will just uh, split into different queues okay so we can say q1 q2 like that and each queue has some reservation say for example the 50 percentage is for this queue and percentage for this queue so the people will submit to those particular queues okay and uh, definitely since it's having the reservation so but within the queue okay if multiple people are submitting to this queue and multiple people are only the reservation is say for example 50 percentage of reservation for this queue and uh, maybe in mostly if you have the multi-tenant environment or multiple departments are involved so we will implement this type of scenario uh, we will have uh, some reservation for this and some reservation within that department the people will compete each other and again uh, how uh, they uh, resolve this uh, priorities again so under this queue there will be a fifo running so even though it's only the tip thing is we have a fifo scheduler but that is having with the 
different uh, reservation associated with that so that is a capacity scheduler okay but nowadays uh, the fair scheduler also work within that queue so earlier only the uh, fifo scheduler works inside the queue so capacity scheduler will work in a hierarchical queue base so we will have the multiple queues for each department fair share is something like each one will get a, a fair or equal opportunity it's something like okay so fair scheduler also we can have the queue but only the difference is like say for example so one person has submitted and he is getting the complete 100 percentage of resources if next person submit the job so so initially he has associated 100 percent but he will get 50 and then remaining 50 will be associated to this one so if third person submit so he will also get some resources so that whatever the resources available so that will be equally distributed to different people so that means everyone will get a fair or equal opportunity for the resources so these are the three different types of uh, uh, queuing so one is the fifo and the another is capacity scheduler and third is fair scale scheduler so fifo scheduler is default in apache distribution in hortonworks capacity scheduler and fair share in cloudera fifo is just like a first in first out simple queuing mechanism capacity scheduler is something like we have a defined different various queues and we will associate a certain capacity so capacity is nothing but certain reservation for that queue and within that queue the pe people will be running in a fifa or fair mode and fair share is entirely different like each one will get an equal opportunity so whenever one submit the job then if another one submit the job so he will also get an equal uh, distribution but uh, so when we do uh, the lab so it will be uh, more uh, clear so on each scheduler because we should know uh, at least the very basic of these three schedulers even though we are handling with the fair share in our case so right now what i did is just change that scheduler to fifo so in that case let's just take two users okay so i am ready to submit this job and uh, another one is uh, this user is also ready to submit the job okay let me submit this job first so i need 100 slots or uh, right and uh, Once he started, let's do submit this job also. Okay. Now, if I go back, go to uh, think in my case, uh, I'll have to eight zero double eight. Okay. So one is in running state. What happened to the second job? Yeah, so this is in running state. Okay, so this re this is running with the uh, 36 and uh, But the second job we submitted and it's not uh, getting started until uh, this complete or at least okay if I just uh, open uh, this into new window you can see how many is completed and when it's uh, start so 30 maps has completed and uh, still it's running so 46 maps are completed and uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, hit here and see so only 18 are pending <clears throat> 30 uh, 35 are running right so now when whenever see the CEO is pending and uh, yeah now a 28 are running so only zero is pending this time the other job will get started because even though uh, this is an accepted state right so even though the second job is running the first job has got some resources because 
sorry you can see this is a change to running state because this is running with the 28 and uh, we have the few more uh, remaining right so total 36 and uh, 28 plus 8 are free so those free resources only given to this one so technically the first priority is for the first person so once he complete the job or once he is uh, reaching to the near to the completion and his resources are available only that resources will be given to the second or upcoming jobs okay so this is how the fifa scheduler normal simple queuing mechanism like those who submit the first will have the higher highest priority so once he complete or once he reached to near to the completion so this is completed now entire resources given to him so if anyone else submit the job now so he will have to wait until this complete or this reach near to the completion and some uh, slots are free or some week or and memory are free then only the other jobs would be able to submit the job okay and you can see it's by default it's uh, going to the default queue and uh, uh, so this is how the fifo scheduler work shigish can you yeah. show the capacity schedulers how to create a queue and how to transfer between queue yeah please so the next is the capacity uh, scheduler So you guys okay to extend for another 10 more minutes or uh, if you have any anything planned activities okay then uh, we will just take uh, five, 10 more minutes and uh, maybe tomorrow we will do in detail so this is the capacity uh, scheduler okay so normally uh, in in normal case so I just changed to FIFO and if you see the scheduler thing only the default uh, queue you can see okay under default so we have uh, this much is running and uh, what is the maximum and the minimum capacity and uh, uh, so all those information you will get okay and uh, right now I'm, ch I'm changing change to capacity scheduler and saving this and uh, once you change that capacity scheduler so we have option like uh, the yarn capacity scheduler root queue so this is the queues that are under uh, this root queue like uh, so like i said uh, we have uh, in capacity scheduler so it uh, follows a tree structure we have a root under that we can have like uh, maybe i'm just using production marketing and uh, or, or production and marketing i'm just having two queues production marketing uh, okay so we don't have the defaults again so we need to have the uh, value for uh, the default capacity uh that we can define for uh, this one so i'm just having the queue as production so this is the capacity is the percentage i'm just adding 50 percentage adding one more so that is for another sorry A production and uh, the next queue is marketing right and uh, marketing so what is the value 50 and also we have the maximum queue uh, capacity also no, we will see that tomorrow but so this time what we did is just a root queues so root is the uh, top level under root we can have multiple queues so i have a uh, a root capacity as 
100 percentage and under that we have a production and marketing and which is having 50 50 and also we have a lot more parameter that we will see later but right now i just added that and uh, trying to restart Uh, is it hang or no oh, it's a uh, restarting uh, the services okay because uh, these changes uh, require a restart so in in capacity uh, scheduler we will have a uh, uh, various uh, queues so root is the parent under that we have the production so we call this as root dot production and uh, root dot marketing and also under this production we can have the sub queue so we call this root dot production dot whatever this queue name and we have a capacity so that is the default capacity and maybe for the root it's 100 percentage and for the uh, all together if you uh, add it all together should be 100 say for example if this is 50 50 that is fine so if it's 50 30 and we have one more queue then uh, that should be 20. so that is a capacity default capacity and there is another thing called maximum capacity that we will see later so this defined so how what is the allocated percentage for this uh, queue okay so once this is done and we will just see uh, the resource manager go to the uh, uh, source manager and uh, go to the scheduler you can see here okay and uh, let's see capacity so we have a marketing and a production okay so this is the queue and you can see what is the capacity is 50 maximum capacity by default 100 so maximum capacity means if no one is using okay it's all under root right no one is using the production so it can take the resources from the production queue also but if somebody submit that production queue it re release that resources so that it will use that production people can use so here i'll i'll just submit the same job but only uh, the difference is I, I'll just add that queue name here. Okay. Uh, so the way we add the queue name is uh, iPhone. We will use this option iPhone D. My produce dot job dot. name equal to uh, I can say root dot marketing Oops. unknown Q root dot marketing or just marketing yeah okay that is fine uh, now if you just hit here scheduler you can see the marketing resources have start using but 
we have given the capacity 50 percentage right but if no jobs are running on the production so it, it this is the 50 till here but you can see this color is amber that means uh, so this is used the resources from the complete resources maybe uh, maybe if you just refresh here and you can see so this is using the uh, extra also but if, if i just use here i find the map reduce dot job dot q name equal to uh, production so in that case if i submit this job then uh, now out of total we have only how much 36 right so it's supposed to use only 8 18 okay more than 18 it cannot use but uh, since if no jobs are running here, so it may be using so I'm just going to submit the job for another queue also the production so in that case And Shigish, can we change the queue? How can we change the queue for the job? Yeah, the, 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 this option while submitting this option you have seen right Oh, once we submitted it right and while it is going on do we need to kill the click the that particular job and then to resubmit or how does it work yeah we need to resubmit uh we have to kill we cannot do it while it is running am i correct no no yeah correct so when we kill the job then uh, it will rerun it cannot go back to the previous uh, uh cannot continue from the place because sometimes jobs are for five over two three over right so is there yes. any way to serve the no way uh, uh, preemption thing I'll, I'll have to uh, check that is there any option available so normally uh so they won't uh allow this but i'll have to check that this preemption and without killing switching okay so here now you can see even though earlier it was using more resources now you can see 18 18 equally distributed right so that is about the capacity scheduler so we have different queues under root we have marketing and this value like uh, the maximum capacity and all we can change so that so in this case if if no jobs are running so it can if no jobs in marketing this production people can use the full resources so if no jobs in the production marketing people can use so that is what this parameter the maximum capacity and the capacity is something like that what we are saying like if i submit again one more job to the this queue it will be in fifo mode i mean the second job will be will be on that queue will be in the fifo mode it will be has to wait okay so we will see more uh, example on this before case tomorrow okay i think it's a bit late sorry people so is this clear yes yes it is, it is clear thank you before before is something first come first serve and capacity we will have a defined uh, queues and within that queue it will do in a fifa way and uh, between the queue there will be a reservation assigned and fair scare again in a different way it will be have so that we will see tomorrow okay so Thank try you. to do some hands-on uh, just to uh, make these changes and do some hands-on then it will be very clear otherwise uh, the theory part for this schedule is a bit confusing so first try to get uh, capture some information like uh, do some hands-on and experience then if you start reading the theory it will be very clear otherwise the theory will be confusing and they will say the capacity scheduler is using the fifo and fair share is using again that and capacity is using fair share and you will be thinking okay why we need this much schedulers and uh, finally you will think all will be have in the same way but if you just do uh, a couple of exercises then it will be very clear so fifo is the very simple and the capacity we can have that capacity and in fair also we have the uh, that uh, 
uh, queuing and capacity option available uh, mostly the people won't change the scheduler like in hortonworks people they will go with this capacity and uh, cloudera people go with uh, this fair share okay so let's wind up for now then tomorrow we will see the remaining uh, portion of this scheduler okay